All right, so I'm gonna explain about relative humidity. Uh, so Ross came up with this question, and I'm gonna try to answer this for you. So relative humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air compared to how much there could be. So it's a percentage. So if the air at 50 degrees can hold all of this and it's full, it's 100% relative humidity, and we call that at the dew point, which means any more water or any less temperature. So if the temperature shrinks and the, and the yellow dot shrinks, the water comes out, usually as dew. As the temperature goes up, the circle gets bigger. Same amount of water. Bigger circle, 86 degrees, same amount of water, now it's 28%. But realistically, as the temperature is 86 degrees, some of this water will evaporate, which means it will go from the ground in a, in a liquid state into vapor. And then this blue circle actually gets much bigger. Maybe it's 50% here. Then at night, when it gets colder again, the yellow shrinks. This blue water now becomes 60, 70, 80, 90% humidity. So here is a container of water. I've dotted blue just so you can get this idea. So there is water that is in the air all the time. And the air has the ability to hold a certain amount of water. So we'll think of this cup as the ability of the air to hold the water. As the air gets warmer, it holds more water, so the cup gets bigger, and as it gets colder, the cup gets smaller. So let's say we have this, the ability to hold, uh, we'll say 10 ounces, and I put five ounces in here, which means it is now 50% relative humidity. Now that number is way more important than the actual ounces because that determines your comfort level. This is the difference between your ability to sweat, your ability to not have dry skin. So we like between 40 and 60%. So this is a really happy number we have. But now what happens is this cup doesn't stay the same size all day. As the temperature changes, the size of the cup changes. The air can hold more or less water. So as the day gets, gets going, this cup gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it holds less water. Then at night, the sun goes down, temperature goes down. As the temperature goes down, the amount of water doesn't change, but the amount of water the cup can hold changes. So now it's gone from today is a nice, beautiful 75 degree day, and then it becomes 70 and 60 and, 60 and 59, 50, 40, and it gets colder and colder and colder until we reach the dew point. Once the water is saturated, the air is saturated with water, it cannot hold any more water. Now, one degree colder and you get dew. It's a very small amount of moisture coming out. And this is gonna happen in the morning and the, the coldest part of the day. And then you get dew coming out. Then the sun comes back up. And as the sun comes out, this cup is gonna get bigger again. It's gonna be able to hold more moisture, except now, it's going to be a lower percentage because it just drops some more. But then the sun comes out and more water evaporates. So it fills back up again. Then it gets cold again at night. And this process continues. It gets cold, it gets cold, and the water then comes out. If it, the temperature drops really quickly, as in the air rises, a cold front comes in, something major, the clouds cover over the sun, and it drops quickly. When it drops really quickly, and this drops from 70 degrees to 50 degrees, it doesn't have a chance to become dew very slowly. It becomes rain. So here's another way to look at this. So we have a graph right here. This shows you the amount of actual water. So the way we measure actual something would be mass, grams per kilogram of air. So a big chunk of air and how many grams of water there is. So today it's about 20 something degrees, 25 degrees, 20 degrees maybe. So Celsius, there could be 20 grams of water in the air. And there is 10 grams, which means it's 50% relative humidity. You can see what happens to the humidity, the ability to hold water as the temperature goes up. 50 degrees Celsius is well above anything that we could handle human-wise, but that's where it holds tons and tons. That becomes steam kind of level where it holds a lot of moisture. Here's another way of looking at this. Now, the way we measure relative humidity is you can get a little device, my phone does it, I showed you this last week, or you can get a little electronic device that will show you humidity, or you can use the old fashioned way, two 
thermometers. One is called dry bulb. The other one is called wet bulb. This is where you would take the uh, two exact same thermometers. One of them, you put a little piece of cloth that's wet. And just as you've experienced, if you get out of a pool and it's a little bit chilly and you're all wet, it feels really cold. You take these two thermometers, one of them being wet, one of them being dry. If you have two thermometers at home, you can ask your parents, go do this. You wave them around your head. And if the thermometer said it's 20 degrees out, and then the other one said that it was four degrees less, because that all that moisture evaporating, it would mean that it's 66% humidity. How about if none of the water evaporated? If the air was full, none of it evaporates? Well, that's 100% humidity. The air is full. None of that wet bulb can go anywhere. And if all of it goes away, 13 degree difference, you're down to 5% humidity. Very, very, very dry. So this is the, the humidity for today. It's really high. So right around 7 o'clock this morning, there was a little bit of dew. Now, you wouldn't necessarily know it because it rained last night, but potentially the air was a little bit damp right here. Then... What happens midday? The temperature goes up. Temperature goes up, humidity goes down. Why does it go back up? Because the temperature is going to start to climb. Sun sets right here at 730, and then the temperature is going to start to go down, which means the humidity percentage goes up. So what's comfortable? This is the comfort zone. We like between 40 and 60% humidity, but if it's really, really hot, like 85 degrees, we don't want 60%. We want 35%. And if it's really, really cold, we want it to be more like 60 or 70% because this is going to give us a, a better comfort, not real cold, but this would be where we want some moist air. This is too humid. This is too dry. This is too warm. This is too cold. I'll put this PowerPoint in Schoology so you can take a look at it if you'd like to. All right. Bye.